Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, I'm going to bring you a video on the new Tier 5 Pan-Asian Destroyer, the Anshan. Now with this quick review, hopefully you can make the decision on whether or not you want to purchase the ship or not. And I'll give you my recommendation at the end. Anyways, uh, we'll look at the premium upgrade slots and... Uh, the uh, various uh, equipment, torpedoes, guns, etc. on the ship, and then we'll take this ship out for um, for some slight uh, action in the water so you can see how it performs. Anyways, so let's get started. Now right off the bat, we're looking at in the uh, um, camera mode, and you can see it's a, uh, it's a nice looking ship. Uh, she's got that Soviet look to her because she is a Soviet class ship. She is a Nebney class that's been modified by the uh, people, I believe it's the PLAN at the time. And uh, here you have, you can see she's got one, two, uh, three, four guns on her. They look like 130s. And she's got the torpedo uh, launchers, two triple mounts in the middle. Okay, so nice looking um, uh, camo on it as well. So let's first look at the premium upgrade slots. So it's a tier five ship. You normally get two. But in this case, you're going to get three, which is nice, and it's going to be torpedo options. So we'll look at that as well. So right off the bat, uh, our first slot here, you have your standard aiming systems, uh, AA gun mod number two, and main battery mod. Now, I'm suggesting uh, most likely, like myself, you're going to want to have this uh, Anshan as a gunboat with some half-decent torpedo defense. Now... For this one, I would recommend taking the man ba main battery mod number two, and the reason is you want to get your main battery traverse speed down. It starts off at a base 30 seconds, at least a minus, uh, when you uh, reduce it by 15%, that'll get it down to about 25 or 26 seconds, which, or I should say, lower than that. We'll have a look in a minute. Mind you, you're going to take a hit in your main battery reload time of 5%, but that's not a big deal because you're starting off with a base 3.5 second reload on this thing, which is pretty insane. Anyways, now the next slot here, uh, you know, you got a lot of choice here. You got your steering gear mod number two, which is what I'm choosing right now because I want the better rudder shift. And you also got, got propulsion mod, which some people might want to choose for this. And there's damage control. I recommend personally steering gear mod number two to get that minus 20% on your rudder shift. Okay. Now, when we look at the torps here, uh, you're going to see right now I have the base torps on here, the uh, 533 mil Mark 9s. The reload time's at 79, max damage 13.5, torpedo range 8.5 kilometers. That's because I got cleaves on here. It's a base 6, I believe. Torpedo speed's at 60 knots. Torpedo detectability is 0.8 kilometers, which is nice. Now, if you put the option on here, and uh, let's just install it. And uh, there we have it. You're going to have the upgrade, okay? Reload time now goes to 79 well it's 79 or it's going to get plus nine max damage no real big deal but torpedo range uh you got the you're going to get a plus 2.2 increase torpedo speed is going to take a massive reduction and torpedo reductibility is going to take a minus 0.5 okay so let's go back here we have that on here oh we didn't take anything hold on we got to install it so we're going to install this one and let's have a look at it how does this do for our uh, torps? As you can see now, 79 second reload, 7.2 second turn, max damage 13.5, 0 0.8, 8.5 kilometer range, which is quite good. That's quite very healthy. And torpedo speed sitting at a not too shabby 60 knots, a little on the slow side. Now, if we put the other torpedoes back on, let's go back up here. And we're going to put the other ones on. Okay. Uninstall. There we go. So if we look at these torp stats, we're now looking at a 70 second reload. Okay. Uh, 13, uh, 5 uh, max damage. A difference of 90. Who cares there, right? Now, your big difference here is the uh, torpedo detectability. It's now at 1.3, where the other ones give you 0.8. And torpedo range is at 6.3, where the other gives you 8.5. But no, that's with Gleaves as an inspiration and your torpedo speed is significant you go from 60 to 75 knots so right now we're working with these ones on here at the moment okay now if you look at the other stats here uh survivability got almost 15,000 hull points uh artillery 
Uh, you're looking at four single 130s, and these guns are pretty good. They're just like your Nevni guns. Uh, firing range exactly the same as the Nevni at 10.7 kilometers. Now the reload time, right now it's at 3.4 seconds, which is pretty darn good. And you can see uh, the turn time. When you take that, you can go from a 30 second all the way down to 18.8 by, uh, and I think that's necessary on this ship. You're going to want to take, sorry, if you want to make it a gunboat. I made mine into a gunboat, my Anshan. Shan. Uh, HE shells do uh, 2,000 HE damage, 7% fire chance, and a 2750 AP shell, which is not too shabby. We already talked about torpedoes. AA defense. Now, AA on the Anshan is an improvement over the Nevni. Okay. Maneuverability. We're looking at 38 knots. I believe it's a little slower than the Nevni, but still um, pretty quick. With a beautiful rudder shift of 3.9 seconds. Concealment-wise, you're at 6.2 Okay, now if we look at armor, like everything, destroyers, they have no armor, right? Overview of the ship, it's a sure shot. Shells have a good ballistic trajectory, maintain velocity, making aiming easier. Yeah, you've got your uh, Russian uh, uh, rail guns on here, which is really nice to have for a destroyer. And of course, she's fast, a little slower than an Evni, but still darn quick. And she's got those deep water torps, which means you can't use them on the uh, destroyers, but... You know, these uh, torps are fast anyways. And it says right here, it's one of the Soviet destroyers built under Project 7, which, as we know, is the Nevni class. Fast and with powerful artillery, she was acquired by the uh, PLAN in 1955. Uh, her AA defenses had been noticeably enhanced, okay? All right, so if we go back over here, and we have a look in here, as you can see, uh, our torpedoes right now, the ones we have on here, there they are. We have uh, a 6.3 kilometer range, uh, reload time of 70 seconds, torpedo speed of 75 knots. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me there. And I believe these, uh, this version is not the deep water torpedo. The other ones are the deep water torps. So uh, you can use this one against other destroyers. Now we've got an engine boost on here, which is nice to have. And the smoke generator is great to have when you're a gunboat. And that's what we're playing this one as. Uh, we're putting the booster on here to give us additional speed. There's the camouflage on there. And you get this is the flag that you can get for the Anshan. You know, it's a nice looking flag. So we got that on there as well. Now, if we go back out. And uh, let's have a look at um, the commanders here. As you know, you pre pretty much you can use all three if you want. Um, if you could choose uh, Deng. And if you want to use Deng. Um, this is how I have Deng set up, and this is probably how I would have them set up on the Anshan if I wanted to make it into a more of a hybrid uh, destroyer and make use of my torpedoes more. Uh, with the base trait of Quantum of Solace, giving you additional torp damage and reduction of your torpedo detectability, I mean your destroyer detectability, which is nice. Um, you can use the uh, subsurface venture and uh, get your torpedo launcher reload time down. And increase your torpedo speed from uh, another four knots, which can bring those 75 knot uh, torps up to pretty much 79. That's blistering fast. And you want to use fragile threat probably. Um, I have and make use of possibly torpedo safari if you, like I mentioned, if you want to make your Anshan into more of a torpedo boat. These are the uh, the uh, skills you're going to probably want to choose, giving you another 12% to your torpedo range with gleaves would um, give you probably around a 9.5 to 9.7 range with your uh, torpedoes on here if you chose the deep water ones to give you that additional range. So that's a pretty significant range for your um, your Pan-Asian torpedo boat if you wanted to make that boat like that. And of course, the uh, skill that's wonderful for these guys is your knuckle duster torpedo detectability as well as chances of your torpedoes in passing in enemy modules, which is awesome. Mind you, take a slight reduction in damage. I think this skill is well worth it. And of course, for legendary, I just took speed. So that's if you want to make your um, your boat into a, uh, a torpedo boat. Now, if we put him on there, let's just put him on there and see what happens. If we take a look at the stats, um, you're going to get your uh, survival down to 12. But artillery... 
Uh, you now you take a slight hit in your artillery from 10.7 down to 10, a four second reload, and a 26 second turn time. So as you can see, when you focus more on the torpedo boat, you're going to get hurt in many other areas. Like your HE shells go down in damage, as well as your AP shells go down in damage. However, your torpedoes, if you look at them here, you got two triples. Your reload time is now down to 61 seconds, which is one minute. Um, you have a third, but basically a 14,000 max damage, 1.3 detectability, uh, torpedo range 7.1, 79 knots. That's if you keep the standard torpedoes on here. Now, if we go out and then we put in, uh, if you're going to make it a torpedo boat, you're going to want to choose these things. Okay. And then we go back to our stats and let's have a look at those stats now. Now you're looking at 69 second, uh, reload, uh, your torpedo detectability range now goes down by 0.5, so it's now 0.8 kilometers, which is pretty sneaky. But look at that range, 9.4 kilometers on a torpedo speed, 64 knots. So if you want to make this into a torpedo boat, this is kind of what you need to do. And your concealment is going to be 5.3. So it's not too shabby for a torpedo boat. If you want to do that with some half-decent protection, if you do get into a gunfight, with a four second reload, mind you, a pretty rough 26 second uh, turn time. But we're, no, we're not gonna run this boat this way, am I? I think this boat would work way better if you run it as a basic gunboat. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna put our torpedoes back on, uh, take these things off, go back with standard torps, we'll uninstall it. So we got our standard torps back. As you can see, we got them back there, okay. And then we're going to put um, this guy on here, Sabang, okay? And if we look at Sabang, um, mind you, I still ended up leaving Gleaves on here because I still want that little additional range with my torpedoes when I get into some issues with other ships. Mind you, we're going to have uh, Eric Bay on here to give us better concealment. Uh, we've got the tin opener, great skill. Minimum ricochet angle of my uh, AP shells, got to love it plus 6.4 degrees and what we have on here is we're going to run observant rage giving my main battery reload time a minus eight percent uh my torpedo detectability range at 15 a rudder shift is going to take a slight hit but that's okay we have a really good rudder shift on here now when you're going to go with number two here um I'm, since I'm going gunboat, I'm not going to use this. I don't care about detectability there because I have bay, but I really want motor. Motor's an awesome skill, which all you gunboat players out there probably do enjoy it. What gets me my AP shells, HE shells, an additional 10% of damage. Mind you, my detectability is also going to take a hit. But I love twist and track. I think it's a necessary skill to keep this, to keep you alive. So I'm running this, but you could take, um, uh, reaching out if you really want to get that extra range or perceptive, but I think twist and twacks all the way to go. Plus, it gives you even more traverse speed for your gunboat. Beautiful. And of course, you can't go wrong with knuckle duster for the pan Asian ships. It's just great. Minus 50 meters, minus 20% to give that additional potential uh, flooding damage, etc. etc. And we're going to go with speed. And right now, he's a 14-2 commander, which makes him a very viable commander now. And we are going to run the Anshan with Saw. And right off the bat, I've been having great success with Saw as a gunboat commander here. And so we'll go back out. And uh, there we well, there we have it, guys. Now, of course, you can use any of the inspirations you want for your commanders. Like some people like to use Sims to give additional... Um, uh, um, haul points on your ship, which is a great idea. I do run a lot of boats with uh, my destroyers with Sims to give additional, and I probably will try it out on here. But for now, we're going to run Sa the way he is on this destroyer here. And now we're going to take this uh, ship out. Oh, I, hold on. Before I do that, some people might not even have these commanders yet and may have to result with Ding. And you know what? Ding's okay. Um, if you set him up as a destroyer commander, he'll be okay because you can put to, you can get additional fire damage. You could go for uh, torpedo speed. You could go better for uh, detectability range. Uh, you, you could go a crisscross. You could use this one. So there are some options if you don't have the two Asian destroyer commanders that you could make use of Ding on here. Not the best because you really want uh, a um, 
a destroyer commander on here, but he is doable on the ship, but it really does not do well for the Anshan until you get those destroyer commanders. And you want to get those destroyer commanders in the Pan-Asians up to at least a 12 minimum with a legendary level 2, but 14 is optimum. And over time, you can then increase it to the 16-2 or 16-3 or even 16-4 if you're really into these ships. All right. Anyways, let's take this ship out and we'll run some uh, some moments for the Anshan. So thank you for watching. Hope you stick around for the Anshan moments. Damn it! Problem solved. 